All right, guys. Um, just want to talk about reinventing yourself and um, changing direction. Because one of the one of the things that happens, I may need myself. Uh, you get stuck in a rut sometimes. One of the things it was. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It was a long time ago, but it was on about when he moved to the UK. Um, where it sort of encourages with like one person to work in the family because the way they've set the benefit system up is beneficial that just one person works because the rest gets offset by um, the benefits. So even if you want to work, sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. In fact, you're sometimes worse off. Um, and he actually wants to do stuff and he sort of got into a rut because even thinking about it, you then worry, is it going to affect the benefits? You know, um, UK system's a bit odd in that sense. Uh, it discourages development. Um, I'm not going to get into the benefit system too much, but even if you go on a short-term contract, then I think you lose pay for six weeks. I don't know if that still exists now, but then discourages you from doing uh, short-term work because you're going to lose six six weeks of benefits. Um but anyway, um, the whole point is it's very similar to like current, like my current working situation, or a lot of you guys out there. You're doing stuff you don't want to do. Myself, I'm finding um, the industry I'm in more and more frustrating because the people that know what they're doing, and you know. People like myself, and it's not because I'm some massive expert in anything, it's quite simply I've been doing it a long time. And you're finding more and more people like myself are leaving the industry. They'd rather go and work in an Amazon warehouse sometimes because you deal with a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. Um, and there's a certain point you just think, I can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> which moves us on to the new topic, um, which is reinventing yourself. And the reason I sort of want to bring it up is because I do it myself, so it's not something um, that we're just talking about. I've done it multiple times. Um, it's a bit like stuff in the Philippines. We, we The YouTube stuff I don't do as much as I used to, so the revenue on YouTube dropped. Um, but at the same time, that money I actually use to fund stuff in the Philippines. So we have like... Um, coin operated Wi-Fi there where basically people will put um, some money in a coin slot they, they get a code and they can use the Wi-Fi um, the, the bizarre thing is my wife is on about it says you you come up with that idea like a long time ago let's just say that probably about 2009 or something um, and and the last sort of year or so it sort of caught on um, but the point being is, it sometimes is a case of thinking out the box. Like there, I'm not even in the Philippines, but having that there, make sure the electric's funded, make sure any um, emergency money sorted for, like things like medical bills or or typhoons blowing your roof off the house. Um, you get it's for cash generation. Um, even if you're not taking the cash, it's to um, build up emergency pots of money and then you sometimes will find other things and then you invest in that because you've got money from this and you know like renting the apartments out in the Philippines that's another one um, but the the whole key to this is it is sometimes thinking out the box sometimes it's changing direction reinventing yourself finding another niche um, like at the minute um, Myself, I'm trying to find where I need, where I go from here. Because bizarrely, this may may shock you. I don't have all the answers. Because um, I put myself on this um, journey for a five year five year uh, plan to sort of get out the rat in the rat race and back out. I think we're in year three now, and I'm a little bit further behind than I'd have liked. But let's face it, two years of COVID didn't help. <laughs> um, and then obviously we had some work issues with, but like I said, it just seems like the whole industry is failing. Um, 
because people I talk to are in all the big companies and they've all got the same issues. They all hate going to work. But it's not because these people are missable gifts, it's because the you're dealing with too many people that have no idea what they're doing. Um, the industry's gone in a very, very bad way. Um, I mean, I'm in the PFI sort of realms and everybody wants out of it. It's, the PFIs, uh, they're, um, <clears throat> if you don't know what they are, oh, we're going off on a tangent here, let me just put the coffee down. Um, so, PFI. <clears throat> Basically, government couldn't afford hospitals, schools, libraries. So what they did is they borrowed from the banks. They set up these um, investments where basically the buildings are owned by the banks. Money is generated through the maintenance on the banks. Local authorities and whatever pay uh, funds monthly, annually, etc. Um, and the money's recovered over 25 years on a lot of it. A lot of the PFIs been really badly managed. The money's been taken out of accounts far earlier than it should have been. Money's been taken that was earmarked for boilers, roofs, windows, painting, flooring, pipe work, he, um, air conditioning and taking its profits but the problem is the for example an air conditioning unit that's now 20 years old should have been changed five or six years ago it's already broken and the money's already been taken the other side of that being is that air conditioning unit let's just say was four thousand pounds if they'd done it six years ago it is now six and a half thousand pounds so it's all false economy um and it's been badly managed all over the place i mean there's a lot of contracts that are just losing money hand over fist and you've had a lot of companies exit that took the profit early on which means the ones that have took it as a profit have lost their liability because they've left um, anybody comes in is left with what the other ones have taken so like I'm saying you've got a lot of equipment that's very old um, the money that was earmarked for it has been taken by others and you expect it to make everything wonderful again and a lot of people can't understand why it doesn't work even when you sit and explain it in basics <laughs> you're just going I can't stand this anymore um, so that's what I deal with on a da uh, daily basis and I've done for the last probably the last five years because a lot of these contracts are now running at 10, 15 years old when everything starts to break and people are going fix it there's no money <laughs> <coughs> so it's complicated um, to be polite um, but for me it's not just that I want to be home with these guys, you know, I want to be home with the family. It's not a case of I'm happy doing this. And like I said, I set a five year on it. And the whole point of the five year was that I committed to that. And then I must go back to Spain. Um, Cause it's very easy to get into a good um, financial situation in the sense of it's reasonably paid. Um, and you get comfortable. But at the same time, I've lived out in the Philippines on virtually no money and been much, much happier. Um, <coughs> so it's just finding that, and this is, gets back into the reinvention. So for me, it's a bit like I'm looking at stuff I can do remotely. Over here, um, I've got a few project management books because I'm trying to look at it from different angles. Uh, IT project management and how that works to um, in comparison to construction I look at construction and there's a documents I can produce that I can sell for people you know for example offering uh, risk and method statements or you know all the boring tedious stuff but I can sit in Spain and do it um, something I can badge up and sell as a pack you know for small small construction firms this one covers 
roofing and the different types of roofing, da da da, and then revise it every year, depending on how many I sell or I put it out there, and then they say can have a different revision because um, the regulations have changed, then I update it um, as a separate charge. The point being is looking at how I can still use my skills but in different ways i've also got python there um i'm learning to get into python i say get into python because i'm not 100 percent where i'm going with it yet um but i know i picked that stuff up quite quickly um with with coding a lot of it is down to having a functionality with it if i understand a project in the sense i've got to get from a to b I can learn it quite fast because I've got an objective and I'm trying to work out how to do it. And then you pick that up over time. That's where my Excel skills come from. Is every time um, I was doing something, I would then add to my Excel knowledge and I just built it up over time. These are things where I'm thinking out the box to, in the sense of still in my same realms, because like the, the coding piece will be around um, CAFM systems and maybe creating something for, like I say, risk and method statements on a digital version that's connected to tablets, the cloud, blah, blah, blah. I'll see where it goes. There's a lot of stuff already out there as well, but you've got to make it in a way um, you can get it across to uh, the people that are going to buy it. I mean, there's a lot of really good software out there. Um, for being designed for bigger companies, but big companies um, often aren't managing their facilities in the sense of they sub it out, hence we get back to the PFI problem. Um, and those sub companies, if they're using say, Concept, uh, Maximo or SAP or one of the other ones and it's already set up, doesn't matter how bad it is, they go, well, we already know how bad it is. If we change to something else, it may still be bad. It's this whole negative arena in the sense of, yeah, we know it doesn't work, but if we try and fix it, we might make it worse. Where mine is, <clears throat> I can run it all on Excel, temporary if you need it. But reality is, <clears throat> it doesn't work. That's the end of end all. You're spending thousands, or tens of thousands a year on licensing on something that doesn't work. So this is where I'm sort of looking at different solutions. <clears throat> at the same time, starting to look outside that box as well. Is there something I can do um, locally in Spain, buying and sell property? Yes, I, I know I'm not a fan of real estate agents myself, but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm starting to get to that point where I think I can give a better service. Um, than many of the ones out there. Um, and I think some people trust me. That's their own fault. <laughs> and, uh, I generally, I generally am trustworthy anyway, but the um, I do think there's an opportunity there. I do think there's opportunities um, in other, other parts of the world. I, for a few years, I did quite well in the American market with the solar market. Um, solar. We're working with Carlos on uh, software and virus protection and data protection stuff um, for companies from, uh, I think, Tel Aviv. Point being is you don't need to be locked into where you are now. And like I said, the reason I'm discussing this today is to show this is how I get on in life. This is how I've managed to move to the Philippines, spend time in Qatar, Oman, um, Abu Dhabi, live in Spain um, is because you think out the box society's not built that way it doesn't want you to do that because here's another conversation put in links below um, videos on how rich people think you know this will be interesting to see what people's ideas come up with because a lot of it is people thinking in different ways. And I've seen it um, with some of the people I know, and they are very wealthy, because they have a different perspective. And I know Rich Dad, Poor Dad um, covers some of it in the way um, 
you look at trying to get other people to do the work and it, it's hard to explain because quite some, unless, unless you read the book um, it's hard to sort of explain it so my best recommendation is read the book um, I think you may be able to find it as an audio book on YouTube but the perspective is different because the ethics and everything is different um, it's the same as if we went to eating it would not be the same syllabus and education you'll get in a government school or a um, what do you call it a state college or something like that It will. it's a different pattern of thought um, and the reason it's relevant is if you can start to think that way you can start to see things in a different light so it's like me I earn I earn fairly well um, but not as much as I can earn you know in the sense of um, see I can't really discuss salaries it's a contract thing but um, in my industry you're sort of probably talking uh, for project management levels if you looked on say Glassdoor or whatever it's probably from 40,000 a year to maybe 75,000 then you get your, your car or your car allowance and then just the odd perk here and there but you, you're sort of heading towards just under a hundred thousand a year um, I was talking to a friend yesterday does similar on a contracting basis um, he's probably nearly two hundred thousand this year myself the best money is the money that's made when it doesn't involve you actually having to do a lot of the work hence like I was saying document preparations knowing that you know somebody needs a document reviewed for let's just say rams for a roofing project 80% of that document will be exactly the same the other 20% would be the bit that you spend 15 minutes doing and a lot of the time you'll literally just go to the person and go where's uh, where's the site where's the information da -da -da -da. give me the drawing drop it in done because why you need a site is because one of the th things you need is to know where the nearest hospital is. But the point is, that is a quick thing once you've got the postcodes. Um, but it's all all that sort of stuff where I could teach my wife to do it. And then I charge it at my rates. Um, in the same way, there's a lot of document preparation that could be like that. And a lot of stuff I already have. So, yeah, a lot of it is thinking out of the box. But the only way you can sort of start to do that is free up time. And that's one of the things I'm starting to do now. The last three years have been a nightmare. Um, the contracts I'm going into lately, um, like I said, they're in bad places. And it takes a lot of energy to turn them around. And I'm getting to that point now where I'm not interested in going after nine to five. I've got too much other stuff I want to move on to. Um, need to refocus and find my way out of. It's, it's sort of like a rut in the sense of, for myself, it's. I see it's a rut, but as a business, they see it, the business is getting turned around. So it's sort of, it's sort of like that because you actually, for the business point, it's very good, and for your personal you're not moving forward so there's a lot of that to do um, but the point I'm bringing up is you can find these ways out and I know sometimes if you haven't got any current skills that you see yourself first thing you need to learn is you can still retrain you can learn you can find new things you can still progress the first step is actually recognizing you have to Nobody's going to do it for you. Life is only as easy as you make it. Um, my life is a lot more complicated than the average other person because, you know, um, take care of some of the uh, family stuff in the Philippines. Um, you know, I'm losing the, the, the roof of the typhoon. Um, my house is in Spain. I work in the UK. It is more complicated than others. But that should highlight the fact that if your life is less complicated, 
you should be able to do it easier than me. The whole point is is realizing upskill, learn, train, move forward. Um, and we can all get there. Like I said, the advantage you've got over a lot of the other people out there is they've got no incentive to do it. It goes against society. They want you to stay in the same job for 20 odd years. And let's face it, it's something that I couldn't do. It was, you know, somebody could work in the same job for 20, 30 years, then just retire. I, that's not me. Now, don't get me wrong, everyone has their place in society, and understand if some people do that and they're happy doing it, and it's like people that retire, they move to Spain. Um, the fact is, they made a choice that that's the safe route. When you start going out the box a bit, the route is a bit more precarious because the safety nets are gone. Um, you know, I don't get unemployment benefit in Spain. My medical medical cover is private. My um, my ability to stand on my own two feet is the most important thing because everything that goes on is relying on it. But at the same point, that's why I probably don't fail as much as a lot of other people. Um, because I can't have that luxury. I can't go on unemployment. I don't do that stuff. I mean, and don't get me wrong. You know, when I was younger, I struggled. You know, when I was trying to go through college and stuff. You know, because everyone's like, oh, you know, you're young. Um, you haven't got the experience, all that sort of stuff. Um so they make life harder and they don't pay proper wages because you're younger um, but as you get older the opportunities are bigger the ability to sometimes diversify is there until you hit a certain point then you struggle in the sense of I may struggle in my 60s to work because companies don't want people in their 60s if they can help it um, not many of them anyway um, but the point being is that's where you got to think, well, if people ain't going to employ me, I need to employ myself. Work for yourself, that's the, that's the ultimate thing. But the point is, you need to work out how to get forward. Um, yeah, and that's, that's my sort of conversation piece for today. Life is not here to be made easy for you. The easy realms are the ones that come un permanently unemployed and just plod through life whinging about it, yet do nothing about change. The other ones are the ones that um, go to football on a Friday. I'd say I don't even know if football's Friday or Saturday. There you go. Um, go to football matches, focus on that, have the same job. And their, their focus is the football and just getting through the week. Me, I want to see Portugal. I want to um, tour France. I want to go up to a lot more of the different regions of Spain. Um, I want to take the kids up to Germany and um, visit other parts of Europe. Maybe later a career in Japan. But not on a two week holiday a year. I want to condense my income. So my cash generation is either automated or it's done at certain times of the year. Um, to free up my time to actually do stuff I want to do. And like I said, a lot of this is about thinking about how you can change everything to get to where you want. Um, I've sort of lost that focus for a bit, and I know I have, and that was that was caused because of the work stuff. Um, it's just been painful, um, but I've sort of sort of getting back on my own path again. But I knew that when I took this on, that the rat race is 
not where I want to be. It's not my. Um, it's not the way I think. You know. Yeah. There's more to life. And once you've been out there, it's very hard to come back to it. And once the whole point of me being in it is my thoughts are my conservatory is getting finished in January. So my house is built, my office space will be ready. That's when I can start focusing on getting back into moving forward again. Um, and don't get me wrong, we've achieved a lot in the short period of time. Um, but we took a lot on the chin. We took a massive amount of pain over the last few years. Um, but that also reinforces the fact you can do it as well. You can move forward. Don't accept where you are if you're not happy there. Think about how you can change it. doesn't mean you have to go off the wall and say, I hate my job, I'm quitting. And Think about it. It's like, here, yeah, it's Saturday morning. I'm sat having a coffee. Looking at my books, thinking I need to read my books. Do you want to see what books I've got? It's a bit of a dump over in the corner at the minute because I'm starting to get stuff ready for going home for Christmas. But see, even here, I've got re about relaxation. I've got Elon Musk here. F work, let's play. Surrounded by idiots. The Digital Nomad Handbook. Uh, David Mitchell, so what about his uh, autobiography? Well, it's a bit about his comedy stuff. I'm still halfway through that one, to be fair. Uh, How to Thrive in the Virtual Workspace, Rules of Wealth, The Rules of Life, Uncommon Knowledge, The New Silk Road, The Chimp Paradox. And then down here, as I said, I've got Project Management Handbook, Project Management for Absolute Beginner's Guide, and Captain Code, which is part of my. Um, moving into Python and then I've got loads of um, magazines I buy some of these ones from the airports uh, like the Windows 10 manual and what else we got here uh, there's one for the Googles and the the uh, what's the other one I've got Google and I've got the i the iMac ones because one of the reasons I've got those is to write tutorials for YouTube because already laid out very easily and a good material to take one thing and turn it into something else. That's the whole thing that's, I think that was in um, before our work week about taking, I think he took five books and then turned out his own. But to be fair, I could see the threads of the other five in his book, but uh, what's his name? Tim Ferriss. I mean, it made him a millionaire, so good luck to the guy. I find him as a bit of an arrogant person, but at the same time, that, there you go. He he found a little niche in there and took it. Um, I'm not going to say I thought there was a lot of plagiarism in it because at the end of the day, he did what he did. There's other stuff he did, like um, what's he selling? One of these selling some um, health enhancers that were were promising stuff that wasn't true and stuff as well. So I wouldn't say he's a trustworthy person. I didn't say. <laughs> Um, because I think the company he sold it and then there was legal battles with the company that bought it around the fact that it didn't do what it promised but there, there's two things there firstly good luck to him he got away with it or ethically what a horrible guy um, you know he missold something blah 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 two different perspectives and one of them is more the way a wealthy person would think and one's more of the average person with ethics <laughs> um, and when I say wealthy person not it's the mindset it's, it's seeing the opportunity see there's a, there's a guy who my dad was in the army with um, and the I mean, I'll give you an example. This is one of the things my father said to me about the guy. I uh, wonder where he is the, now. Because the fact is, the guy was very switched on when it came to money. Um, but, for example, 
when they got to uh, our barrack emplacement, uh, they they're out on exercise, a military exercise, and there's this massive hill up to the the canteen, you know, the restaurant area, um, and the guy, my dad's with, had seen this and recognised that it's like 30 minutes to get up this hill. And uh, he says, oh, there was a shop in the village. And basically went there, got loaves of bread, um, a lot of bacon and stuff. I think he just kept it to bacon. I don't think they did anything else. Bacon, I think it was just bacon, because bacon's quick to cook, etc. And he already knew how many slices of bread you would get out of a loaf. So he knew how many sandwiches you could make, which he meant he knew how much profit he could get by selling bacon sandwiches. As soon as they started cooking them, um, they started selling them to soldiers that are coming <laughs> coming in because <laughs> they're cold, they're wet, they're hungry, and all this all they can smell is bacon. Because um, obviously they're on the way to the canteen. Well, I'm not being funny. If you've been in that situation before and you've been out on a jaunt and whatever and done a lot of uh, walking and stuff, you're going to eat that bacon sandwich on the way to the canteen, then eat again because you're starving, you're cold, you're hungry, um, and you're like, just, you just want something. Um, and everywhere they went, you know, because he was, he was stationed with my father, the guy would see opportunities in everything. You just see it, bang, yeah, there's money to be made in that. Um, my father was saying, I wonder where that guy is now. You know, because obviously my dad retired and he hadn't seen the guy for a long time. But he could pretty much guarantee the guy would be a millionaire because his whole mindset was, oh, opportunity. It's not, oh, I'm an engineer, I only do engineering. It's, where is the opportunity? You know, it's the same as the guy that's seen the um, dust covers on tyres and noticed that the... It, I think it was a Porsche or a Ferrari. I can't remember what he's seen it on, but the, the point is he's seen that it was the same little plastic dust covers on that as there was on a normal car. So he made these uh, specialist ones for Ferraris and whatever. Business from nothing. And it was like literally stuck in a traffic jam and just looked down and thought, why don't they do something that's specialised on that? And it's those little things, little moments um that can can change change your life because like that i think he started off making stuff in the garage and then business developed and uh, i'm not sure if he sold it on or whatever but you see the opportunities there um i've got one down here at the minute i need to i'm gonna have to get this out of the box i've got to find a space to put it i've got a very very um expensive printing machine there that does barcode labels and specialist um, labels. Never used it yet. It's cost three thousand um, pounds, and like I said, starting to get to that point where I'm wanting my time back. That's where I need to focus, learn to use it. You're probably thinking, well, where are you going to sell those? It's a high-speed printer. Um, that does labeling, barcoding, you know, for the industry I'm in, plus many others. eBay, small eBay business running it. Small online business that links into to LinkedIn for companies wanting their own barcodes on equipment. There's opportunities there. And the industry I'm in, I'm connected to a ridiculous amount of people in the same industry that look after Buildings, when I say buildings, I'm talking hospitals, universities, colleges, uh, railway stations, banks. The opportunity there is an example of seeing an opportunity in the industry. I'm in where labels are expensive, um, but also it's something you can do from Spain. Or I can set up here with somebody and they can run it off and then I'll just make them a business partner. And then I'll just find the clients. Like I said, thinking outside the box. Seeing the opportunities and stuff. They're there. The hard bit is getting it started. 
and don't assume it's going to work in the first six months most of the time it doesn't that's why a lot of people will say most businesses fail in the first six months because it doesn't happen in six months um there was uh it was similar with the beds there was somebody doing a forum um they have these meetings for uh nursing in care homes and they, they, they're they sort of sponsored through people selling their wares. So basically, you'd have a speech and a free dinner for people that own care homes and stuff, um, and they meet up and talk about their, you know, uh, get advice on stuff for free. Um, and in return, the entrance in after the meetings is sort of taken up by the sponsors, which are basically the people that sell, I don't know, cheese to care homes you know whatever it is and one of the guys was a um he does beds you know they're automated beds they're expensive um and he'd gone to a few of these and got nothing and then he met the one guy and then uh nothing then it's like i'm wasting my time here i bear in mind this over a period of time this is probably about a year where he hasn't had one sale and he's just thinking waste of time then one of the guys that he'd met a few months earlier put an order in for £30,000 worth of beds for one home. And then the following month, another home. And another. And another. So the, the point being is that one meeting that didn't develop for months suddenly developed into his biggest sales client. So don't always assume it's going to happen straight away. That's like that printer there I've got to get out of the box first I've got to design the website around it I've got to learn how to use it then I've got to make it song and sing and dance the way I want it to or the way customers want it you know because they don't want everything to be generic they want it the way they want so the point is I've got to make it better than everybody else and I've got to make it cost effective and find other sources try different things that will take me a year in my spare time. Full time, can't do it because that's not gonna make any money short term. That's gonna take me time to understand it. My first load of printing will end up in the bin. As I learn to print and go, oh, I forgot this, scrap it, start again, all that lovely stuff. The point being is, don't give up. Everything I've done over the years has been a case of just keep hammering at it, hammer, hammer, hammer. Because it's like, even with the peso internet stuff we're done it, doing at the moment, the coin slots get jammed. They get broken. The routers go down. And then we have to buy new ones. But we don't give up. We just take out the profit from the previous month and buy it again. It's generating money every month. We've got more competition now, but it's still generating a profit. And the key to it is, we're not doing a lot for it. Because once it's set up, it's running. Like this with the printing. Once I get this running, I already have other ideas on what I'm going to do next. Um, but this all gets to need my office in Spain. And I've got to get that from here to Spain. Um, which weighs a ton, so it's not going on the plane. I've got to manually take it, because I don't want to have the lovely import tax into Europe, thanks to uh, the Brexit. I'm going to have to take it with my personal stuff and drive all the way down. Um, but at the same time, I want that. I want another printer that to do decals. Um, these are little things that can turn into small businesses that you can run from a very small place. Um, and don't copy my idea. <laughs> well, to be fair, you could try. Um, one of the big problems you have with this stuff I'm doing is you need to have the network in the first place because um, you'll struggle to even talk to some of these people. Um, this is why I speak to people on CAFM system, which is a computer-aided facilities management systems. There's some fantastic software out there, but as I mentioned before, a lot of these companies are risk adverse, so they don't like change. They can they they don't like it's broke, but they don't want to take responsibility of being the person who broke the new one. Um, so they just don't change anything. It's sad, but that's the state of the nation. Um, but this is where the opportunity comes in as well, because barcode labels, it's its a nice niche market, um, and it has a lot of uses, you know, 
even for small businesses, little labels. In Spain, you see them, locksmith, all that sort of stuff. That'll do all that. Water, waterproof ones, UV protection, you name it. If you, whatever you want to spend, it'll do it. Uh, so I've got sidetracked onto, onto something completely different. But the point is, that's this is where my mind is at the minute, is moving forward, finding new niches. Um, I'm back where I was um, before I got stuck with work. Work, work, work. Because um, I've been focused on fixing stuff in these companies. And then at some point, you start to realise you can take it so far, and then the rest of it, they're on their own journey, or you're wasting your time. Um, so for me at the minute, it's just got it on the journey. I'll correct as much as I can. But I need my weekends back. I need my time back after five o'clock. I need to start looking at my exit strategy. And it all involves moving into other things. In the same way, if you're not happy where you are, do something about it. If you're not happy with the cost of living stuff at the minute, you may need to diversify and find other incomes. Don't sit still on it. Sit still won't fix nothing. You've got to look at what can you do to improve things. I'll leave that with you. Thanks for watching.